Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, upgrading our application to Rails 7.1. So right now, if you're not familiar, I think today officially uh, Rails went to like re release candidate stage. So you're probably going to see like Rails 7.1 release around the 5th of October, if I had to guess, so like four or five days from now. Uh, but it's looking like RC1 is going to be the one that goes in and then, you know, a couple bug fixes or whatever happens between now and then. But what I want to do is I want to take our Rails app, upgrade it to 7.1 because I have a couple plans for some of the features that I want to talk about. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at how we might do this. Now, I haven't personally done this before, so we're going to be learning alongside each other, which I think is pretty cool. So let's just say update uh, server to Rails 7.1, something like that. Submit the issue. We'll come over here, we'll create a branch, we'll click create branch, and then we'll copy this, we'll paste it into our terminal, and then we should be good to go. So the first thing I want to do is come into our gem file, and I want to find the Rails version the app's currently on, which is like 7.0 whatever, and then I'm gonna look for like Rails upgrade uh, versions or something. I think this is it right here. It's the guides.rubyonrails.org slash upgrading Ruby on Rails guide. And then we'll just step through this, because I think there's a couple steps you go through if you want to update. Um, where you just do some stuff. So you start, I believe, by coming into your uh, gem file and in your gem file, you're gonna wanna uh, change it to whatever the current version is, which I think right now, if we come in here, if I move this, I think right now the current Rails gem version, uh, if we come in here, we go to all versions on Ruby gems, should be 7.1 RC2. So not RC1, that's my bad. Uh, but we can come in here and we can at least change this. We'll just change these to RC whatever. And then we'll save this. And then we can, after we do that, I think run the uh, upgrade task, which is something like Rails app colon update, something like that. Uh, but what we're going to see here is that there's, uh, I guess we have to use RC1 for this. So we'll go with this RC1 instead. We'll change this because, uh, again, these, these things will be like a bit tentative as we <laughs> as we go through this. So we can do something like this. Then we can do, I think, a bundle command. And then after this runs through and it grabs whatever is in this current uh, current tag for the Rails, we can then go ahead and run our, our app update, and hopefully that'll work just fine. But this update should go relatively quickly. And then we can do a Rails app update afterwards. Uh, and then this will ask us a couple files that it might want to change. You can of course come into these files and just see if there's stuff in there that you've changed that might cause this to, to be weird. I think in this case, it's uh, pretty standard stuff. Like I don't even think we've changed anything in the development.rb, so I'm gonna hit yes for this. Same thing for the production RB. Uh, and then for our test, I don't think we changed anything in that environment. Uh, for our cores initializers, this has actually changed. If we come into our cores.rb file, this is what it looks like right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit yes, and that's just going to reset it. So I'm gonna actually uncomment that again and just leave it to what we had it before. Next is the filter parameter logging, which we can check right by just typing control P and checking what's in here. So here's our filter parameter logging right here. Uh, we're gonna copy this and then we'll type yes, just to see what it does. Uh, and then if we change this, it kind of just changed the comments is what it looks like. So that should be fine. And then finally is our bin uh, setup, which it doesn't matter if that one changes, so that's okay. And then we get a couple of migrations here that we should run for like active storage stuff. So let's go ahead and let's run those. We'll do a Rails DB colon migrate to add those to our database. And then we can do a Rails S to hopefully start our server. If we come over to localhost port 3000 slash API slash V1 slash posts, we'll hopefully see that our, our API is working just fine. If we open this one up in a new uh, tab, we'll see that the images are also working just fine. So that seems okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna do a Alt Shift Plus here to open up another window. And then in this first one, I'll just print the current working directory. And then I'll CD into here. And then in here, I'll go into the client and then I'll do an NPM run start, or no, run NPM run dev, I think is what it is. I'm in the, the wrong type of application. So that'll run, and then we can do a Rails S over here just to make sure that our application's still working just fine. So it should hopefully open up. There we go. Uh, and here's our React on a Rails app. This all seems totally fine still. So I can change this to like test two. Yeah, so everything seems to still be working. So that was basically it for this uh, little upgrade process here. So if it's like a smaller change between versions, uh, oftentimes my understanding is it'll be like a 
relatively painless upgrade. So let's just go ahead and let's do a git status. Uh, we can see all of the files that changed. Of course, this makes sense because we, we went through all of these and we made sure these were, these were good to change. Uh, and then we have some untracked files, which are like uh, just some new defaults in 7.1. So we can actually just go ahead and we can check that because that's in our initializers, right? So we'll come into config, initializers, and then the new framework defaults, which is just for the 7.1 defaults upgrade. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here about some changes that might have happened, some other comments that just sort of, I guess, uh, tell you everything that you can expect with 7.1, which I think is actually really cool, really helpful way to just keep track of all of this stuff. But okay, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to do. So let's do a git add dot, a git commit dash M, and we'll say upgraded to 7.1 RC1. And then we can do a git push. That'll push it up. We can then come over to our GitHub repo and in our GitHub repo, we can hopefully uh, go to our code, compare and pull request. And then we can go ahead and we can create this pull request. And then we'll just go through here and just merge it real quick. because so we still don't have any sort of continuous integration, I think. It's been a couple days since I've touched this repository. But that'll go ahead, that'll merge in that code. And then in a future video, we can uh, take a look at whatever our next project would be. But for now, this will at least allow you to do stuff like, uh, you know, using normalize in your models, uh, using some of the cool new, um, like user stuff that was added with 7.1 without you having to like rebuild the whole project. And also it's a good idea because like in the real world, you're going to be doing some of these upgrades and stuff. It's a good idea to go through and, uh, you know, like do a, an upgrade or two, just so you kind of understand what it's like in like a, a business setting. Now, generally, um, you're probably going to have like tests and stuff you can rely on here. In this case with the Rails app, we don't really have tests, uh, but it's just like a small little CRUD app. Uh, but you would generally do this and then have like a test that you would run to make sure that all of your stuff is still working. Um, but for now, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I will see you in the next one.